Chapter 1. One of the worst ways of getting rid of unwanted behavior is through punishment. Punishment is still one of humanity's most popular strategies for eradicating undesirable behavior. It has a negligible effect on the subject's behavior. When a subject makes a mistake and is penalized, it does not imply that the activity will end or that a better solution will emerge. Usually, when one degree of punishment fails to work, a greater level of punishment is employed, which almost always has negative consequences. When punishment is administered after an undesired conduct has occurred, an over a lengthy period of time, it may not always succeed. As a result, the subject may not be able to link the punishment to his or her past actions. Animals rarely learn from punishment and humans often fail to do so either. Doing the wrong thing over and over again only wastes time and produces negative results. Reinforcement, which is the continuous practice of a behavior, whether negative or positive, is the most effective method to alter or eliminate undesirable behavior. If we really want to make a good change, however, we must embrace some methods of reinforcement, clicker training, rewards, etc., that are employed to promote positive change. Fear is the enemy of learning. It's the negator of joy, the preventer of play, the inhibitor of trust and love. Fear just gets in the way, slows things down, and causes unnecessary pain. Karen Pryor Karen Pryor has effectively produced one of the books that will stand the test of time in a way that only specialists can. She was able to create a workable approach and technique for changing our behavior or teaching others how to alter theirs by teaching us how to train a dog. In this summary, you will learn how to train animals and how to apply some of the training methods mentioned here to yourself and your environment. Continue reading to learn more about how to utilize positive and negative reinforcements to accomplish your goals. Chapter 2 a reinforcer serves as a trigger that initiates behavioral changes in animals and humans. To understand the concept of encouraging good behavior, it's important to know about behavioral reinforcements. These are continuous practices that make a habit or behavior become part of you. There are two types of reinforcements, positive reinforcement, negative reinforcement. Positive reinforcement occurs when you encourage an activity with a good attitude on a regular basis. This gives you a higher chance of carrying out the said attitude. Negative reinforcement, on the other hand, refers to the continuous process of doing away with something you would want to avoid. A negative reinforcer is an aversion that may be overcome by altering one's behavior. This is particularly easy to accomplish when a new behavior begins. Once you start a good behavior, you tend to cease practicing the unpleasant ones. Punishment barely affects negative habits because it only works on behavior momentarily. In order to get the time of a reinforcement correct, you'll need enough information. This will help you concentrate on what's anticipated. When it comes to learning and behavioral development, knowing when to reinforce is crucial. Late reinforcements may be challenging since you risk reinforcing the incorrect things. You must avoid being too early or too late with reinforcement while selecting the right time. If you're using a positive reinforcer such as rewards and appreciation, keep it modest and simple. You won't rapidly tire the individual you're complimenting if you keep your reinforcer brief. One of the most effective methods to achieve more good outcomes is to use jackpots, which are surprise rewards as a reward reinforcer. Because they are more important than what the recipient expects, jackpots arrive in the form of shock. When a trainee wins a jackpot, his level of production is certain to rise. Chapter 3 a conditioned reinforcer comes in handy when you want the trainee to know the exact moment they're doing well. When you use signs or phrases to show when you're impressed, the learner understands what they need to accomplish and how to achieve it. Therefore, conditioned reinforcement occurs when specific behaviors are rewarded by attaching circumstances to them. You must constantly strengthen yourself in order to comprehend how effectively you can alter and adapt to new situations. For instance, before receiving breakfast, a trainer may teach a dog to leap through a hoop. The dog understands that in order to receive breakfast, it must first leap through a hoop. One of the most effective methods to initiate conditioned reinforcement is to set certain objectives, beginning with behavior that the learner currently exhibits on occasion. Ten laws guide the rules of shaping. Make your demands specific and attainable, so that the topic has a reasonable possibility of receiving reinforcement. Train one element of any particular behavior at a time. Before adding or increasing the criterion, place the existing level of output on a variable reinforcement schedule. 
Relax the existing ones while introducing a new element of the behavioral skill. Plan your shaping program in detail so that you'll know what to emphasize next if the subject makes unanticipated progress. Don't switch trainers in the middle of a session. You may have many trainers per trainee, but only one shaper per behavior. If one method of shaping isn't working, try another. It's not a good idea to interrupt a training session with too many compliments. This is considered a punishment. If the behavior starts to degrade, go through the whole shaping process again. If possible, end each session on a high note, but in any event, stop while you're ahead. The shortcuts to achieving shaping are Targeting This is when you teach a subject to touch a target with a specific part of its body. In doing so, you can change the position of the goal for the trainee to move about. For example, to train a dog how to walk on two legs, put its food on high places. Mimicry This happens when you make a subject watch the behavior of another person or animal so that they can learn. Dogs can watch other dog programs and learn. Modeling This occurs when you teach the subject through manual reinforcement. You use physical attributes to guide them, like holding their hands or bending their body parts, so they know the best poise. Chapter 4 To establish a signal, you have to begin with the behavior first. Behavior is better reinforced if a subject already exhibits it. As long as the behavior is happening, you can stimulate it and then reinforce it with the signals. Signals are important when you are trying to initiate triggers. For example, when you snap your fingers, you bring out your dog's food. By snapping your fingers, your dog automatically knows that it's time to eat. Signals can be achieved in various ways like producing the cue just as the behavior is starting and reinforcing completing the behavior. Alternating between cue and no cue. Reinforcing only the behavior that follows the signal. Shaping response to the cue as behavior itself. Shaping that behavior into what you wish to train. The moment a subject understands the rules, new signals can be joined to new behaviors with fewer difficulties. Reinforcing new behavior is a careful process that requires patience and concentrated efforts. Four rules guide the application of a perfect stimulus even though they have to be applied separately. The behavior always happens soon after the conditioned stimulus is presented. In the absence of the stimulus, the behavior never happens. The conduct is never triggered by other stimuli. In response to this stimuli, no additional action happens. These rules serve as a guide to train various signals for the same behavior, but can't teach different behaviors for the same stimulus. Chapter 5 there are eight methods you can use to get rid of unwanted behavior in and around yourself. Getting rid of unwanted behavior can be challenging and uncomfortable. A lot of people find it hard to change due to the fact that it requires a lot of mental strength and determination. However, Karen Pryor has identified several ways by which you can change or change the behavior of a subject. The best way to get rid of unwanted behavior is to accept that your current one needs to change. This realization prepares you mentally for the journey ahead. Some of these methods are ineffective in achieving the desired results, and that's why you must pay attention to the ones that give positive feedback. These methods are Shoot the dog. This is the capital punishment for unwelcome conduct. It's when you've completely eliminated the habit or eliminated the source of the behavior. It may take the shape of a divorce, resignation, or a change of scenery. The issue with this approach is that the subject learns nothing, and there's a good possibility the error will recur. Punishment The subject learns nothing here, just as in the previous approach. Punishment is humanity's most popular approach, yet it seldom works since it does not solve the issue. Punishment is either delivered too early or too late to have any effect. Negative reinforcement Negative reinforcers are used to communicate a message to the subject. Touching an electric fence is negative reinforcement, since the subject will not want to touch the fence again because of the electric shock. Extinction This happens when you remove the thing that triggers the unwanted behavior from the subject. Put the behavior on cue. You can attach a signal that would trigger unwanted behavior in a subject, and then stop using the signal after a while. By halting this signal, you're also preventing the behavior. Shape the absence you can use this method to get rid of unwanted behavior by changing the discussion or situation. Simply reinforce your position by continually making the subject do what you want. Change the motivation. The moment you can understand why the unwanted behavior is happening, you can change it by removing its causes. 
Did you know? According to an American Pet Product Association National Pet Owner Survey, 4% of the dogs in the U.S. take a training class. Chapter 6 The lack of reinforcement in any aspect of life can cause a trainee to feel less adequate. A lack of effective reinforcers may cause things to seem nearly impossible. Focus, dedication, and timely incentives may be used to reinforce behavior in business and sports. Trainers should avoid employing humiliation or punishment as reinforcers. Anyone who wishes to make a significant change in their life may use reinforcement as a coping strategy. It provides you the boost you need to go all the way without holding back. When you don't have enough reinforcement, you don't have the motivation to push beyond the boundaries and explore beyond what you perceive. You lack forethought and the will to accomplish your objectives regardless of the circumstances. By breaking down instructions into small, achievable steps, learning becomes easier and better. Adopt reinforcement techniques into your life by following basic, easy-to-understand procedures. It's worth noting that not every topic will be learned in the same manner or at the same rate. Indeed, each person's brain is unique, as is their capacity to comprehend information. Breaking down the procedures into a sequence of activities is the greatest thing a reinforcer can do to guarantee straightforward and uncomplicated learning. It's far simpler to study stuff in little chunks than trying to absorb everything all at once. You teach people how to treat you by what you allow, what you stop, and what you reinforce. Tony Gaskins You may utilize clicker training to accomplish your goals. Clicker training is the use of a small mechanical noisemaker like a whistle or a bell, to signal your dog. This method is mainly used in training military dogs. The use of signals and cues to suggest and activate a desired behavior in a subject is known as a clicker training. It has performed a valuable function for dog trainers since its beginning. Training an animal has never been easier than with clicker training. The long-term impact of clicker training is that it explains how any animal may attain the same level of behavioral success. Because of their nature, dolphins are thought to be fun. However, with clicker training, a fish or a lion may be trained to be as playful as a dolphin. Clicker training has a significant impact on the trainer's overall conduct. They are consciously or unconsciously teaching themselves while they instruct their subjects. Conclusion The difference between reinforcement and reward or punishment is quite huge. To enforce a good act, the reinforcer must study the subject and understand what best triggers them. Punishment doesn't guarantee the end of unwanted behavior. Neither does reward ensure an increase in wanted behavior. Reinforcement is when you can balance punishment and reward with the right timing. It gives you the chance to make a mistake and fail. But what's more important is that it also gives you the chance to try again until you get your desired results. Changed behavior is possible with the right tools and methods. The cognitive performance of a subject is reliant on the subject's experience in the outside world. This simply means that if we can shape the experiences of the trainee in the outside world, we can also change the way they behave. A behavioral change is a gradual process that requires a lot of grit, focus, and determination. The results might not be immediately visible, but we will experience a positive shift in the way we think and perform. As the title suggests, shooting the dog doesn't change or impact anything. As long as we are not committed to being patient and determined in order to train others, we will never achieve the desired result. Fear makes it difficult for anyone to learn. When we are put under undue pressure, we become easily frustrated. Once fear is overcome, it becomes easier to learn and adapt to new changes. Try this. Cultivate the habit of reinforcement by removing whatever it is that triggers unwanted behavior in and around you. Study your environment clearly and eliminate the distraction that's keeping you from achieving your goals.